Family and fellow soldiers, I'm the Professor, and this is the Moment of Truth. A Hollywood legend, a cultural icon, a man who's been a fixture of media for decades and decades, everybody's friend, has been embroiled in a scandal regarding personal behavior towards women. A man who has been in the game since the 60s and been a feature of the media landscape for decades on end is exposed. We're talking about Bill Murray here, a man who made his name on television, on Saturday Night Live, no less, which apparently established him as some sort of comedic genius. A man who many in white America regard with reverence, a man who has been the star of so many iconic movies, Caddyshack, Groundhog's Day, and of course, Ghostbusters. Beloved and respected and revered by so many, but now we find out that this man has just been a lecherous creep. And it's time for us to review and rethink everything that we thought about him. Oh, how devastating, how disappointing, how could he have let us all down? Now, I would love to say that this has been getting wall-to-wall coverage, but it hasn't. Because the color of the individual being talked about isn't right. Somebody call up that pathetic, no-good, wannabe comedian Kamau Bell. Tell him forget about Bill Cosby. We need to talk about Bill Murray. According to the British tabloid Page Six, a source said that Bill Murray was very hands-on touchy, not in any personal areas, but put an arm around a woman, touched her hair, pulled her ponytail, but always in a comedic way. Gee, New York Magazine did that BS collage of all the Cosby so-called accusers, but they didn't make it a point to tell their readers that most of the women who they had on their cover never claimed that Cosby laid a finger on them. They said that he stood in a way or looked at them in a way that made them uncomfortable. Why? Just the absolute asinine reaching. Why? Bill Cosby, he actually was in my dressing room. Well, your dressing room had like seven other people in it. Yes, but he was there and I was uncomfortable. And do you think I can get a check? No physical contact at all from most of them, no claims of that. But that didn't stop the white media from trying to portray Cosby as if he had been running around raping and butchering every single one of them. The white media are the ones who established the standard for this. And now, as with everything else, white supremacy is trying to take both sides of the conversation, trying to have it both ways. It applies when they want it to, and it doesn't apply when they don't want it to. Well, over here in the black grassroots, the standards don't change. If merely making someone feel uncomfortable, or in the case of Bill Murray, putting your hands on someone in a way that makes them feel uncomfortable, if that's a firing offense, if that's some sort of hanging offense now, then it's going to be a hanging offense for everyone across the board. And if we're dredging up stories from the 1970s that have no witnesses, no corroboration from a bunch of nobodies, then why is it that we're not saying anything about the people who actually do have names who have made real credible accusations against Bill Murray? Ben Dreyfus, he's the son of Richard Dreyfus. He said that his father Richard and Bill Murray were shooting a movie, What About Bob, in 1991. Now, according to Ben... Things got so heated between Bill Murray and his father that Bill Murray threw an ashtray at Richard Dreyfus. According to Ben Dreyfus, things got so bad that everyone walked off the production and flew back to L.A. and it only resumed production after Disney hired some bodyguards to physically keep Bill Murray and Richard Dreyfus separated in between takes. And it didn't stop there. Bill Murray's behavior toward women on the set apparently was even worse, even to women who actually had real power on the set. Like the late Laura Ziskin, this woman had been a producer on a number of big-budget movies, including Spider-Man. She had also been a producer on the movie What About Bob? And according to her, Bill Murray took her sunglasses, broke them in half, and threw them across the studio parking lot because apparently he was upset with her. And then, as if that wasn't enough, Bill Murray then decided to literally throw her in the lake. This is what Bill Murray did to a woman. In full view of everyone, he didn't just do this to any old person, he did this to a woman who's a producer, no less. Now, if this is what he does to a woman who has actual power on the set, who the person who put the movie together in the first place, God only knows how he was treating women on the set who weren't producers, who didn't have any real pull, and who didn't have the power to greenlight any movies, women who were lower on the totem pole. Though Lucy Liu certainly had a couple of revelations to make on that front. 
Lucy Liu revealed that when she had been shooting those Charlie's Angels movies in which Bill Murray played Bosley, or whomever, apparently he and she had a blow-up on set because he was being abusive and condescending towards her, and she had to put him in check. So Bill Murray's got a long and well-established record of physical and psychological and verbal abuse of women going back decades. Bill Murray's history of lecherous and even violent behavior towards women is very well documented. And unlike with Cosby, you don't have a bunch of completely unsubstantiated lies and fantasy being spun by failed actress, model, whatevers. In Bill Murray's case, the accusations come from A-list Hollywood peers, big-time Hollywood producers. Women who actually made something of themselves, not women who are parasites looking for a payoff in court. No, what's happening with Bill Murray is no witch hunt at all. It's merely karma coming back to bite him in his wrinkled, very wrinkled behind. Whenever it's a white man who's getting accused of sexual impropriety, there is this huge chorus, this hue and cry that goes up from the white media saying, wait, no rush to judgment, have to take our time, what's the evidence, give him the benefit of the doubt, oh, don't smear his name, this is a witch hunt, this is the end of due process. But think about all the black men who they've accused and dragged through the mud. You never hear that for them, not even once. Nobody's saying, what about a rush to judgment? Nobody's saying, wait a minute here. He, we need to hear his side of the story. Nobody's saying, isn't this being blown out of context? None of that at all. Instead, it's, well, this guy, he's just been getting away with murder for the longest time. And look at the severity of the accusations. That's what we get instead. Nobody's sitting here crying for any sort of restraint or let's take our time or let's not ruin his reputation and his career for what might turn out to be unsubstantiated lies, which in 95% of the cases, there was absolutely nothing to back it up. And something else that the white media is conveniently leaving out is the fact that this movie that Bill Murray was working on that this alleged incident happened at is being directed by Aziz Ansari. Now, you'll recall that just a few years ago, he was involved in his own sexual misconduct scandal. But, of course, when you're not black, the white media goes ahead and puts you on ice for a little while, then they start floating your work again as if nothing had happened. So, you saw the way that they raked Nate Parker over the coals for something that didn't even happen. Meanwhile, you got all these other folk who were sitting here saying, oh, well, you know, I feel terrible about what occurred. And meanwhile, we just go ahead and pretend as if nothing had happened at all. Now, can you imagine... If you had had, say, Bill Cosby and Nate Parker, who were working on a movie together, oh, look how fraught with problems this is. Oh, my God, you got these two individuals who have been accused of violating women in Hollywood's just set up this little pedophile predator playground for these black men. I mean, uh, for these rich and powerful men. That's what the headline would be. So you got a movie being written and directed by a guy who's had sexual misconduct scandals starring a man who's also had the same. And the white media is pretending as if, well, we're going to talk about Bill Murray because we don't have a choice but to. But Aziz Ansari, we're not going to mention him, not even if anyone brings his name up. My, how different the reporting is when they're not talking about a black person. This is part of the white media narrative. It's part of how they condition the society. If you got a white celebrity who's accused of something, the response from the public should be an instant defense. Wait a minute, we shouldn't be just pillaring this guy. We shouldn't destroy him just based on accusations. If the person being accused is black, on the other hand, well, let's talk about how serious this is. Oh, there's not a lick of evidence for it. Oh, the person turned out to be lying. Yeah, but the fact that he even got accused, you know he must have done something. Is CNN going to be putting out a report called The Case Against Bill Murray? Is CNN going to be funding any documentaries about the decades of allegations made against Bill Murray and the horror stories told by A-list Hollywood celebrities and producers who had to work with him? Besides, if the entire justification for lynching Bill Cosby in the white media was that, well, he's rich and, and he's powerful. What's powerful mean? Uh, not sure. He, he's rich. That means he's got power. Then why doesn't that apply to Bill Murray even more so? Well, it doesn't apply to Bill Murray for the same reason that it doesn't apply to James Franco or Rob Lowe or Louis C.K. or any of the other countless white celebrities with fame and money and actual power, by the way. Because the white media and the rapist pedophiles who own and run it, they manufacture the hysteria about Cosby and other black male celebrities precisely to get attention off of themselves. And they've been running a nonstop propaganda jihad ever since to try to make sure that this becomes cemented in the public mind. 
And you'll recall that almost all the black men who the white media tried to divert attention onto, almost all of them are proven to have absolutely no basis in fact of having done anything. That was the entire point. Keep up a steady drumbeat of black faces out there. If they mention one white male celebrity, make sure you have at least one black face out there and make sure that it's black in particular. But clearly this phony propaganda offensive wasn't nearly as effective as the white media executives hoped that it would be. They certainly got a whole lot of pushback from the black grassroots. And that's why they introduced trash like Kamal Bell, who came sniffing around looking for a white media contract, a steady paycheck at a white media company. And he would be the black face that they could hide behind to keep up that steady drumbeat just for a little bit longer. But that blew up in his ridiculous face. So now, one would think that Kamau Bill has plenty of time to devote to that Les Moonves documentary, right? And he'll be interviewing all of Les Moonves' victims and giving them all the time in the world to speak and not allow Les to say anything in response because we've already heard his side, right? And he'll be sure to run up in Julie Chen's face and demand to know why she continues to stand next to a puke like Les Moonves, right? Of course not. Kamau Bill's hit piece against Cosby was paid for and broadcast on Showtime, which, as you know, is owned by Paramount, the same company that owns CBS, which Moonves was the head of, and who Julie Chen still works for right up to the very day. So, of course, neither Showtime, CBS, or any of their subsidiaries will be doing any deep dives into Les Moonves' crimes. By the way, Kamau Bill, he's been MIA since his little mockumentary crashed and burned. That crap was DOA from the jump. His would-be big splash didn't make any ripples at all. At this point, about all he can manage are a couple of interviews with some websites that nobody's ever heard of. In one of his recent brain farts, Bell said that we're all just waiting for the straw that breaks the racist camel's back. Yeah, and part of the reason that we've been waiting so long is because we've had bootlick sellouts like Kamau Bell who have been riding that racist camel to glory and sucking on the camel's teats, as well as other body parts, I would imagine. So when he talks about the racist camel, it's a beast that Kamau Bell has been helping to feed, protect, and maintain. Part of the reason we're still fighting is because he's part of the problem. He didn't make a documentary about racism and its control of the world, and the need to destroy it. No, he chose to make a piece of phony, pretend journalism attacking a black man on behalf of his white media paymasters. And he's been out there pimping his little fiction movie to the world, not that anyone's been listening to him. So all of a sudden, this shill for white power is suddenly concerned about bringing racism to an end? Spare me. Kamau Bill is a willing operative of the same racists who have been oppressing and attacking black people for 500 years. He depends on them for every crumb of his daily bread. And secondly, over here in the realm of black empowerment, we're not waiting for anything. White supremacy isn't going to keel over on its own. The fall of white supremacy isn't going to be some happenstance. It's not going to be some event that we can just sit back and wait to watch it happen. Gil Scott Heron told you the revolution will not be televised. White supremacy's fall will have to be made to happen. It is something that we are going to have to do because nobody else is going to do it. And if we're not working to crush and topple white supremacy, then it's not going to fall. It's as simple as that. So while Kamau Bell is putting his effort into propping up white supremacy, we're busy working to tear it down. And since he's been part of the machinery of anti-black racism, that means he's going to go down right along with it. So Bill Murray can go ahead and take a bow. Just like all of these other white male celebrities who nothing has happened to, Bill Murray is basically going to have a phalanx of idiots and suck-ups and well-wishers who are going to say, oh, you're being too harsh on him. And they're going to give him a pass because that's the entire point. It's a double standard. It's a two-tier system and they know it. And that's the way that they want it. The problem isn't that Bill Murray's accusers don't have enough dirt on him, or that he hasn't done anything serious enough to warrant this kind of attention. The problem is his skin's not dark enough. That's the problem. Well, since Kamau Bell and the rest of the white media have made it very clear that it's not about whether or not you did it, it's about the fact that you even got accused. This is about confronting power, then that's exactly what we're going to do. 
And if Kamau Bell and the rest of these bootlick sock puppets have decided suddenly that they lost their microphone, they've lost their keyboards, all of a sudden their little Twitter fingers don't work anymore, oh, they've decided that this isn't important enough for them to cover, that's fine. Kamau Bill declared that he didn't want Bill Cosby to be in his documentary because, well, it was important that this be a one-sided character assassination of the man. Well, in this case, nobody's going to be assassinating Bill Murray's character. They're simply going to be reminding everybody of all the things that he's done all these decades that people just weren't talking about. And as the black media, we're going to be reminding everybody that it's been all of these sock puppets who work for the white media who refuse to talk about it. Finally, a story about Bill Murray that gives you a reason to smile. Good day and be one. I'd like to take a moment to mention some of our contributors. Bobby Williams, Sandra Bates, Eddie Newsom, Robert Hill, and Frederica Moore. Salute to them and thank you to everyone for listening, liking, and sharing this message. Black empowerment only exists because of you.